Hi, and welcome back. Last couple episodes, I've been showing you how to build your own lathe. So this episode, I want to talk about some of the basic tools for turning. But before I even talk about that, I want to talk about how you should dress when you're operating a lathe. Now, look at me. You notice I'm wearing short sleeves. You absolutely don't want any sort of loose, flowing sleeve when you're turning. Uh, if it's cold in the shop, I might wear a tight sweatshirt, but definitely not anything with cuffs or that could be loose and get caught because you can get hurt pretty bad. And then you notice my apron. You've seen me wear this apron a lot on the show because it's a good apron, but it's actually made for turning. And not only does it protect you if something breaks and flies out at you, but it keeps chips out of your pockets and your shirt. And if you ever had clothes full of wood chips, you know that that's a great feature. And then lastly, as Norm Abram says, there's no more important safety tool than safety glasses or something like that. Uh, for turning, you definitely need some sort of face protection. And I know people who use full face shields, which are great, but probably the minimum you would use would be a good pair of safety glasses. Because lathes do throw chips towards your eyes. You, you do not want an eye injury. So moving on to the tools. First one I'm going to show you is this, which is called a spear point, or a sun has a diamond point. And you don't actually use these much in wood turning, but for metal turning, it's your only man. It's You'll use it for 90% of the, the metal turning you do. And the reason is, because of the different angles, you can get any angle you need for a particular job and material. So this one hand tool replaces all the different bits in the tool rest of a metal lathe. For wood turning, the one you're going to use the most is a gouge. This is a medium sized gouge, and this tool is what you're going to use for most of your shaping of the wood. It's great. Uh, as time goes on, you're going to want some other sizes, maybe a, a big heavy one for roughing out corners, and a, a little bitty one, and maybe one that's specially shaped for bowl turning. But for now, the medium one is the one you'll use a lot. And then next I'll show you the parting tool. Parting tool is important for spindle turning because you use it to um, scrape down to size on special critical points and that'll define the shape of your work so you can turn it. Uh, you'll use this quite a bit. And then the skew, also known as a skew chisel. This is to a turner what a smooth plane is to a cabinet maker. It's what you're going to use for any sort of straight section and also to smooth out your work after you've shaped it with a gouge. Like the gouges, you're probably going to want different sizes. This is medium size, medium small, a uh, good one to get started with. And then finally, scrapers. Scrapers are handy when you're working on end grain or on things like MDF that don't really have grain. And you're going to probably want a couple different shapes and sizes, but they're pretty easy to make on your own. That's what most people do. Now, you can scrape with a gouge or a skew, but it makes them dull really fast. So, the primary purpose in life of a scraper is to save the edge on your gouges and skews. Now, with all these hand tools, you're going to need a way to keep them sharp. And there's a lot of different systems and tools, and people will tell you different ways to sharpen. I'll probably do a sharpening episode one of these days on the show, but for now, what I use most of the time is just an ordinary Arkansas stone, well stone, and as long as you uh, you stop as soon as the tool starts to get dull and give it a few swipes, they'll stay pretty sharp, and you'll hardly ever have to rewrite them. And then I follow that up with this, which is called a slip strop. You can see it has leather patches and then just profiles in the wood. And you put a little bit of abrasive on there, and um, you can touch up all the edges and get them crazy razor sharp. Also useful for carving and for your bench chisels and all that. Now the remaining tools I'll show you are all measuring tools. Starting with this ordinary ruler, which is a tool that doesn't get much love in the shop, but it's definitely the easiest way to mark on a turning. M much easier than trying to mess with a tape measure. And then calipers. Calipers come in outside calipers, inside calipers, and then I don't have one, 
So there's something called a hermaphrodite caliper that has both ends. Anyway, you're going to want a few of these. You can leave them set to different uh, measurements. And they're very handy for transferring measurements from the ruler to the diameter, or if you have a pattern to, uh, to measure it and then transfer it to what you're working on. A tool that looks similar is these dividers, which is basically a compass without a pencil. And these you use for all sorts of layout tasks, but their most important one for turning is to find centers, especially if the work's not completely circular. Now, a few minutes ago, I talked about how you can make your own tools. And actually, just about every serious turner I know makes their own tools, especially things like scrapers and skews, which are flat, easy to work on. Here I have a tool I made. It's a skew, as you can see. And this started out as a board out file. And I just um, I smoothed out the teeth on my belt sander. And then I also used the belt sander to, to make the skew edge on the end. And then I sharpened it. And then I had to temper it. Now, tempering is something that confuses beginners quite a bit. And it's actually very simple. I think one of the problems is it's, it's very hard to show in pictures or on video, especially digital cameras. They don't really show the colors of the metal as they're heating. So what I did is I made this little animation. Hopefully it will clear things up for you. Okay, so you've got your tool tempered. Now you can polish it up, you can do the final sharpening, but it's gonna need a handle. You can see this one has a, a seriously crappy handle. It's just a piece of broomstick. So the way I'd like to end up this video is by showing you the way I turn handles for tools. And this will work on any of your turning tools, chisels, anything like that. So hope this video was useful. I'll be back soon with lots more projects and I'll see you then.